an unmarried teenage girl was invited to carry Christ into this world. An ordinary carpenter was invited to be a father to a child unlike any other. The shepherds were invited, outcast and isolated, included at the manger. The magi were invited, foreigners and seekers included at the manger. And if she was invited, and he was invited, and they were invited, then we can trust that we are invited too. This story is for us. This love is for us. Family of faith, this is your invitation. Welcome home. Let us join together in singing verses 1 through 3 of O Come All Ye Faithful. God's house there is hope. We light the candle of hope. In God's house there is peace. Light the candle of peace. In God's house there is joy. Because God created music and coffee and dance floors and laughter and festivities and endless rounds of the Hebrews of babies and if those things have God's greater and God's house surely is joy. 
light the candle of joy. In God's house there is love. Light the candle of love. And in the center of our hope, in peace, and in the center of our joy, so tonight we light the candle, we light the Christ candle, light the Christ candle. For God's love could not stay away. Let us pray. Holy God, we have heard this story a million times. Mary and Joseph, the angels, the shepherds, we've heard it a million times. But we want to hear it like it's the first time. So move among us, circle back, draw close, crack open our hearts and fill them with our goodness. Help us to hear what is your might, you might be saying to us with curiosity, joy and hope. In this invitation, come be here with us. Gratefully we pray, amen. The story of Mary, Luke 1, 26 to 35. Six months after, six months later in Nazareth, a city in the rural province of Galilee, the heavenly messenger Gabriel made another appearance. This time the messenger was sent by God to meet with a virgin named Mary who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of the King David himself. The messenger entered her home. The messenger Gabriel said, greetings, you are favored, and the Lord is with you. Among all women on the earth, you have been blessed. The heavenly messenger's word baffled Mary, and she wondered what type of greeting this was. The messenger replied, Mary, don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. Listen, you are going to become pregnant. You will have a son, and you must name him Savior, or Jesus. Jesus will become the greatest among men. He will be known as the son of the highest God. God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the covenant of family of Jacob forever. Confused, Mary said, but I have never been sexual, I've never had sexual relations with a man. How can this be possible? Gabriel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Most High will overshadow you. That's why this holy child will be known as not just your son, but also the Son of God. Let us sing verse 1 and 4 of Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
story of Joseph, Matthew 1, verses 18 to 23. So here is the story of the birth of Jesus, the anointed. Mary was engaged to marry Joseph, son of David. They haven't married, and yet sometime, well before their wedding date, Mary learned that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, because he was kind and upstanding and honorable, wanted to spare Mary shame. He did not wish to cause her more embarrassment than necessary. This itself is pretty remarkable because Mary has never had sex. She and Joseph have not even spent very much time alone, but they are pledged to each other and their wedding feasts have been planned. Now when Joseph had decided to act on his instance, a messenger of the Lord came to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to win Mary and bring her into your home and family as your wife. She did not seek off and sleep, sleep with someone else. Rather, she convinced the baby she now carries through the monar monarchous wonder working of the Holy Spirit. She will have a son and you will name, name him Jesus, which means the Lord saves because this Jesus is the person who will save all of his people from sin. Years and years ago, Isaiah, a prophet of Israel, foretold the story of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. A virgin will conceive and bear a son, and his name will be Emmanuel, which is a Hebrew name that means God with us. Please join in, join in saying Emmanuel. Rod will play through it once, then we will sing it twice. The story of the census from Luke 2 verses 1 through 6a. Around the time of Elizabeth's amazing pregnancy and John's birth, the emperor in Rome, Caesar Augustus, required everyone in the Roman Empire to participate in a massive census. The first census since Quinarius had become governor of Syria. Each person had to go to his or her ancestral city to be counted. This political background isn't uh, incidental. It is crucial to the story. Conquering nations in the ancient world work in various ways. Some brutally destroy and plunder the nations they conquer. Some conquer people as slaves or servants. Other empires allow the people to remain in their land and work as before, but with one major change. The conquered people have to pay taxes to their rulers. The purpose of a census like the one Luke describes is to be sure that everyone is appropriately taxed and knows who is in charge. Mary's fiance Joseph from Nazareth in Galilee had to participate in the census in the same way everyone else did because he was a descendant of King David. His ancestral city was Bethlehem, David's birthplace. 
Mary, who was now late in her pregnancy, that the messenger Gabriel had predicted, accompanied Joseph. We will now sing O Little Town of Bethlehem, verses 1 and 4. story of a birth comes from Luke 2, 6b through 7. While in Bethlehem, Mary went into labor and gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped the baby in a blanket and laid him in a feeding trough because the inn had no room for them. Please join us in a way in the manger. shepherds is from Luke verse, chapter 2 verses 8 through 14. Nearby in the fields outside of Bethlehem, a group of shepherds were guarding their flocks from predators in the darkness of night. Suddenly a messenger of the Lord stood in front of them, and the darkness was replaced by a glorious light, the shining light of God's glory. They were terrified. God's message said, don't be afraid. Listen, I bring good news, news of great joy, News will, will affect people everywhere. Today in the city of David, a liberator has been born for you. He is the promised anointed one, the supreme authority. You will know you have found him when you see a baby wrapped in a blanket, lying in a feeding trough. At that moment, the first heavenly messenger was joined by a vast heavenly choir. They praised God. To the highest heights of the universe, glory to God and on earth peace among all people who bring pleasure to God. Please join in singing verse 2 of Angels We Have Heard on High.
coming from Luke 2, uh, verses 15 through 18. As soon as the heavenly messengers disappeared into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's rush down to Bethlehem and see what's happening. Let's experience what the Lord has told us about. So they ran into town and eventually found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the feeding trough. After they saw the baby, they spread the story of what they had experienced and what had been said to them about this child. Everyone who heard their story were amazed and couldn't stop thinking about its meaning. Please join in singing, What Child Is This? verses 1 and 2. Generosity is in the DNA of our faith. We give what we can, not because we should, and not because the scripture says to. We give because we're family. We give because we belong to one another. We give because we're invited to God's house. Before we finish telling the story tonight, we want to extend to you a special invitation to give. Um, whether you give online or you um, mail in your offering or you put it in the uh, plates in the back. Um, we want to invite you to give to the United Church of Christ Disaster Ministries so that they can continue to offer a helping hand to the thousands of people who have been affected by the natural disasters just recently, both here in this community and beyond. Let us pray. Your story is one that forever invites us to be our full selves, to take up space, to go where we feel called, and to allow this community to feel like home. So use these gifts to keep building your home here. With gratitude as tall as the ceiling, we pray. Amen. The story of the Magi, Matthew 2, 1 through 2, 7 through 10. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem, in the province of Judea, at the time when King Herod reigned. Not long after Jesus was born, magi, wise men or seers, from the east made their way from the east to Jerusalem. 
These wise men, wise men made inquirers, inquiries. Where is the newborn? Who is the king of the Jews? When we were far away in the east, we saw his star, and we followed its glisten and gleam all the way to worship him. Herod called the wise men to him, demanding to know the exact time that special star appeared to them. Then Herod sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go to Bethlehem and search high and low for the Savior child, and as soon as you know where he is, report it to me, so that I may go and worship them. The wise men left Herod's chambers and went on their way. The star they had seen in the east reappeared, a miracle at that, of course, overjoyed and enraptured the wise men. The star led them to the house where Jesus lay. Let us join together in singing the first Noel, verse 2 and 5. like we've been waiting so long for this night amidst the hustle and the bustle of this busy season we have been waiting for a quiet calm a stillness we have been waiting for good news that changes us and for the undeniable sense that you are near so in this moment surrounded by community in the presence of candlelight and hallelujahs, we bow our heads and give thanks. We have so much, so much to be grateful for. However, even amidst our prayers of gratitude and joy, we also bring you prayers of concern. For when the music is quiet and the clouds clear, there is enough space for hurt to float to the surface. So many are still seeking, still looking for answers and healing and belonging. We are closer to home, but we're not there yet. We are only truly home when we are with you. And you invite us into a life of faith. You love us through every season. You forgive us when we lose our way and invite us deeper 
every step of the way. Friends, you are loved. You are invited. You are claimed. You are celebrated. You are forgiven. God throws open the door and invites you here to this table. This is the place where Jesus broke bread with both friends and with those who would betray you, saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. And when they finished eating, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this is my life. Pour it out for you. The beginning of a new relationship with God. So God of Starlight and Angel Choruses, on this Christmas Eve, as you come dwelling among us, pour out your spirit upon us and on these gifts. Hover here. Hear our prayers. And as you scoop us up and draw us in, transform us and strengthen us so that we might help build the world you have in mind for us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was with God in the beginning. Through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. Those who welcomed him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory Glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Friends, tonight, God makes a home in our lives and invites us to extend that love and welcome to others. If you're gathered here in the sanctuary with me tonight, you are invited to partake of the bread and the cup you received as you enter. As Rod plays through Silent Night. For those joining online, you're invited to share in the bread and the cup of your choice. And we then invite you to invite you here in the sanctuary and those joining us online to then share in the light of Christ as we light our candles and sing verse 1 and 3 of Silent Night. <laughs>
of our hope, in the center of our peace, in the center of our joy, in the center of our love, is God. God who came to this earth to make a home among us. You are invited to extinguish your candles by dipping them in the cup that you hold. But as you do so, remember that the light of God cannot be extinguished. It lives in you. It lives in me. It lives in every word we speak and every action we take because God makes a home in our lives. Let us join together with the chorus of shepherds and angels and sing out the truth that Jesus Christ is born. Thank mm -hmm. you.